Karibu sana. Welcome to our 27th edition of Soma. Leo to Soma, Colossians chapter 1, verses 9 through 14. In this episode, we're going to talk about how to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to Him. The Bible says in verse 9, And so from that day we heard, We have not ceased to pray for you, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of His will and all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to Him, bearing fruit in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to His glorious might, for all endurance and patience with joy, giving thanks to the Father, who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of His beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Now the main phrase we're going to focus on here is in verse 10, walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to Him. Now, my question as we read through this passage is, okay, hata mimi nataka. I want to be fully pleasing to God. I want Him to say, you know, well done, good and faithful servant. But now my question is, how? How do we do that? The Bible says in verse 9, And so from that day we have not ceased to pray for you, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of His will. Now, and notice this phrase here, In all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord. So this so is connecting back to what we see here in verse 9. So we need, in order to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, we need to have knowledge of His will. Now, how do I get knowledge of God's will? Because I want to be be fully pleasing to Him, walking in a manner that's worthy of the Lord. What we can see is obvious here it comes through prayer. Paul says, he's praying for the Colossians. We have not ceased to pray for you, the Colossians, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of God. So you get the knowledge of God's will through prayer. Now, and also we can see here, this word here, filled. How do I get knowledge of God's will? It's something I need to be filled with. So in other words, it's something that I'm lacking. I don't have. It's not natural to me. I need to be filled with the knowledge of God's will. This is something that actually comes through salvation. It comes through salvation. Upon salvation, the Lord puts the Spirit of God inside of you. And one of the things that He does is He helps you walk according to His will, the laws that He put even in the Old Testament. You see that God wants, he, it's not natural to us, but now the Spirit of God enables us to walk in the knowledge of His will. Now when you see this phrase here, His will, a lot of things that, one of the things that comes to my mind is what's God's will for my life? Is it to be a doctor, a lawyer, a teacher? What is God's will for my life? Well, that's not what this is referring to. His will is referring to something that helps me walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to Him. His will is something that that I can do to make Him be pleased. Now, what's amazing to me here is the knowledge of God's will, I said, is not something that comes natural to us. But at the same time, I want to live a life that's fully pleasing to Him. God gives you the means to walk in a way that's fully pleasing to Him. He fills you with the knowledge of His will. He answers these prayers as you pray to the Lord. He answers these prayers to to give you knowledge of His will, to walk in a way that's fully pleasing to Him. It's incredible that God does that. He doesn't just leave you and say, you need to do your best, but instead He gives you you the tools, the means to, to help you live a life that's fully pleasing to Him. Now, as we move forward in this verse, we can see how do you know if you're living a life that is fully pleasing to God? If you're living according to the knowledge that He's given you, that's that's been graciously given to you. There's several descriptors. We can see anytime you see like a colon like this right here, it's letting you know that there's some something that you need to pay attention to. It's going to actually describe this statement in depth. So, what are some characteristics of those who are living a life that's fully pleasing to Him? We can see here, this word here, bearing fruit. Bearing fruit. Um, When I hear this this phrase here, like bearing fruit, I think of um, Galatians 5, 22 through 23, which is the fruit of the Spirit. Um, Someone who is bearing fruit is someone who is, um, is filled with the Spirit, that is walking in the Spirit, as we see in Galatians 5. As someone who's living a life of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. But it's more than just that. 
It's also bearing fruit. I also think of evangelism. Um, someone who is um, in actively sharing the gospel, bringing people into the kingdom of God. But it's not just that. It's also being obedient. It's being obedient. John 15 verses 1 through 11 says we, need to, we can only bear fruit by abiding in Jesus Christ. And one of the, fruit, one of the ways that you abide in Jesus Christ is you're obedient to his word. So this is what it means here. So someone is pleasing to God, living a life that's fully pleasing to him, is bearing fruit. Now, I love this phrase here as we continue on with this bearing fruit. It says, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. So we can see here, there's a repeating word here, knowledge, and again, this word here, knowledge. So the knowledge of His will is, a, is something that's similar to the knowledge of God. But what is this connected? Bearing fruit, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. In other words, as you bear fruit, this could be mostly through some form of service to God, whether it's in obedience to this or to that, preaching the gospel, or showing love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, or self-control. It's some form of service to God. And as you serve God, you're going to increase, you're going to be increasing in the knowledge of God. In other words, as you are obedient to service with Jesus and a servant's service to the Lord in your church or some form of ministry, or even it's just in your own personal life, as you are faithful to serve the Lord in those sorts of ways, that one of the blessings of that is you increase in the knowledge of God. You understand Him more. So my question is, are you serving the Lord? If not, don't expect to be increasing in knowledge of God, and don't expect to be living a life that's fully pleasing to Him. Now, the second thing that we can see here is how does someone live a life that's fully pleasing to him? The Bible says in verse 11, being strengthened with all power, all power. This is the second way that someone lives a life that's fully pleasing to him. Now, someone who's living a life that's fully pleasing to God, that's filled with the knowledge of his will, fully pleasing to God, they're bearing fruit. They're going to suffer persecution, They're going to go through hard times. That's why they need to be strengthened with all power, according to His glorious might. Now, how does God strengthen us according to His glorious might? He does it for all endurance and patience. Endurance right here means the capacity to push forward in difficult circumstances. It's kind of that inner drive. Patience is kind of the emotions behind it. So we can call this the inner drive. And this could be the emotions. Emotion. So God strengthens you with the inner drive now to move forward, um, to continue to persevere, to continue to bear fruit, to be strengthened by Him, and it gives you the emotional will to do it. Now, the third way that someone is living a life that's fully pleasing Him, they, they're not only bearing fruit, being strengthened with all power, is by giving thanks. Giving thanks is the third way that we bear, that we're being strengthened. Now, giving thanks in which way? Because when you hear thanks, it's just like, Asante Mungu, the Umelipa school fees. Asante Mungu, that, you know, Mimi Nandele, Afia, that I have life, whatever. But the thing is, Hapa to go on to Naona it says, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. So we're giving thanks to the Father for number one qualifying you, number two, delivering you, and number three, transferring you. Now, notice these words here, qualified, delivered, and transferred. They're all verbs. Look at the verb, the action, the doing words. What is the action that, that, I'm, that God is the Father who is doing for me? God the Father who has, so that's what God has done. He's qualified you to share in the inheritance of saints in the light. Now, this is something that's always important. If you're pleasing to God, living life that's fully pleasing to Him, you're someone that's una shukuru sana. Now, shukuru kwa kitu gani, for how He's qualified you. What does it mean that God has qualified you? 
Well, first of all, you didn't have the ability to be qualified for salvation. It was God who did it. He's the one who has qualified you. Now it says he's qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. What does that mean? Well, saints in light are those that love the truth. So God has qualified you or enabled you to receive an inheritance with those that love the truth. Before you hated truth, but now you love the truth. You love the truth that it is God who saves you, that that it is the Lord who has placed the knowledge of his will inside of you. He has filled you with his knowledge, and you praise him for that. That's a truth that you've been given by him, that he has saved you, and so you want to, so he's qualified you to do that. Now notice this in verse 13, it says, He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved son. So in other words, you were in one kingdom, the domain of darkness, and now you've been transferred to the king, another kingdom, the kingdom of his beloved son. And we thank God for that. You were walking in darkness, away from the Lord, walking in sin, completely separated from Him. But God is gracious in mercy. He's a delivering God who takes you from this darkness and transfers you to a whole new kingdom of His beloved Son, Jesus Christ. Now, and it is, I want this transferring happened because of redemption and forgiveness of sins. Jesus Christ paid, we were, this, this right here, redemption, is actually slave language, slavery language. You were a slave to sin, and you, can, and you cannot get all out of sin, but instead the Lord, the God himself sent his son, and his son paid the penalty for your sin to redeem you from sin. He pulled you out of this. You were a slave to sin. Now you've been placed into a whole different kingdom, the kingdom of his son. And he also, the Bible says, through the forgiveness of sins. Through the son, we have forgiveness of sins. That means not only did God pay the price through the blood of his son, Jesus Christ, but he also has forgiven us. Because his son paid for for our forgiveness through the blood of Jesus Christ, we have forgiveness. God is a gracious and merciful and loving God. The fact that he would forgive us because of sending his son, Jesus Christ, to pay on the cross for our sins. So I want to ask you, as we close here, are you bearing fruit? Are you being strengthened with all power? Are you giving thanks? One way that you'll know that you're living a life that's pleasing to God is if you're active in service. Another way you're going to know if you're living a life that's pleasing to God is if you are struggling with some form of persecution. If you're struggling with some form of persecution, you're living a life that's been persecuted for for serving Jesus Christ, being pleasing to Him, walking in the knowledge of His will, you're going to suffer persecution. Another way that you're going to know if you're living a life that's fully pleasing to Him, how is your prayer? How's your prayer life? Is it a prayer life that's marked with giving thanks or you're always asking for God, Mungus idea, Mimi. Or you're decreeing and de- declaring and commanding God to do all sorts of things. Or are you giving thanks to Him for all that He has done for you? Giving thanks for how He's qualified you, delivered you, and transferred you. Live a life that's fully pleasing to the Lord. Look at these three descriptors and judge for yourself of that. And be encouraged that. Don't be too harsh yourself. Know that God has filled you with the knowledge of His will to enable you to live a life that is fully pleasing to Him. Are you drawing on that knowledge? Are you actively seeking more knowledge? Are you actively praying for more knowledge? If you are, then you're going to be doing these three things and you'll see that growth in your life. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much as you've given us the means to live a life that is fully pleasing to you. Thank you, Lord, that you work in and through us to help us bear fruit. Thank you, Father, you strengthen us to continue to live a life that is pleasing to you. Thank you, Lord, that you've also qualified us, delivered us, and transferred us from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of your beloved Son. Because of that, Lord, now we can live a life that is fully pleasing to you. You are actively working for us to help us please you. Father, help us to be obedient to that. Help us to bear fruit, be strengthened, and to give thanks. Commit all these things into your hands, and we say thank you in Jesus' name.
Amen.